happy where it's like you're working on a video and then you're like you get you get put in that situation where you're like well i could go to bed now and come back or i could just get it quickly finished and then render it overnight <laughs> quickly finished yeah the rabbit hole there that's it yeah. that's, what I, that's what i always do i'm always like i could do that or i could render overnight you uh you set up to render and you stay up or you uh set up to render and you try to go to bed i always try and i always try and like get it done and then render it while i'm in asleep and then i wake up and then hopefully my pc hasn't gone standby or whatever <laughs> do, you, do you ever set up to render and uh and then you go to sleep and then you wake up and you see that uh that your program or, or premiere is saying like, are you sure you want to overwrite this file? And you, you forgot to click yes. Yeah, that, that, that was a long a long time ago. They used to have to be all the fucking time. <laughs> oh, God, that's the worst. Okay, uh, hey, everybody. This is Under the Mayo. I'm here with Ketchup. Hello. Uh, and so uh, we are inserting this little section into the beginning of the podcast because we just recorded episode two. Uh, about half a day ago, and then there was the official announcement that Denuvo was being taken out, and that they're working on performance issues. And so we had a, I, don't know, I wouldn't say a lengthy discussion, but you know, a good discussion about what was going on and the issues, and what's going on in the community, and what's coming in the future. And a lot of that just kind of became irrelevant after the the last uh, the last publication, and so. We we're going to scrap that part of the conversation. I don't know if maybe a sentence or two will come in, but a lot of it just doesn't seem to apply. Uh, would you would you agree with that sentiment, Ketchup? Yeah, I mean, uh, and I'm going to sound, uh, just a quick FYI, I'm going to sound a lot more awake now than I did in the podcast, so just prepare <laughs> yourself for that. But, um, I mean, my general st like stance always kind of was, it's it's hard for me to talk about because I didn't really know much about what was going on. Um, so I, I didn't feel super really educated to give like a big opinion because everyone's asking me and I'm kind of like, well, I don't really know much about it, mate. So it's it, I, I was never really going to be able to give a, a particularly in-depth opinion on the matter because I hadn't really played Doom Eternal much since the patch and sure, I, I hadn't really neither. done any battle mode or anything. So it was just um, it was one of those things where I think for, for quite a few of us, my stance was, well, it sounds like it could be. It sounds pretty unfortunate for those being affected by it, uh, and I know not everyone was being affected by the performance stuff and stuff like that. But uh, I had faith in the team, and you know, fingers crossed, there will just be a fix. And it's almost kind of ironic how, after saying that, like what eight hours later, I guess, after we had yeah. that conversation, uh, we already have complete information that a fix is on the way. Um, maybe, Marty maybe, was it was, really... maybe it was that De Nuvo and they were listening to the conversation and they knew they had to oh, fix God. it after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh god um well i know um marty was very very upfront about why it was there uh what yeah. their whole objective was <clears throat> i really do sympathize um with uh, one of the sentences as to why they included it is as, as an anti-cheat is because uh, doom 2016 was definitely kind of hurt by a lack of anti-cheat and not really acting very quickly early on as someone who lived and breathed that game's multiplayer and was super involved in the community and you know, I knew all the passionate people that, uh, you know, did community tournaments or just matchmaked it, streamed it, whatever it was. Um, we were all kind of passively always pretty bummed out that there wasn't really much of an anti-cheat at all in Doom 2016. And it did hurt the game and it did hurt the community for a while, actually. So, like, I really do sympathize with that final sentence and understand that side of it for sure. But I am glad there's a fix on the way, especially for the performance side of things. And it seems like they've... Um, They've been very professional with how they've approached it, and just like other situations they've had to address, I got to give the team massive props for staying professional all the way through. I love to see it, and you rarely see it, to be honest. Yeah, um, I'm pretty uh, assured by this. Uh, you know, uh, time will tell. I hope something comes out quick, um, but I'm uh, I'm positive looking into the future, and. Um, with that, uh, with that said, uh, the beginning of this podcast might have a couple weird edits or two as I clean up uh, around our recorded audio, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and insert this right into the beginning before we said hello, 
seamless edit incoming in three two morning and good evening morning. everyone uh hello well this is uh this is mayo hello uh you guys want to introduce yourselves it's me again uh yeah ketchup <laughs> what's up everyone early morning for me late night for spud uh even earlier morning for mayo i'm sure yeah and it's me spuddy ready to rock and roll nice nice to talk to you guys again uh, so yeah, um, people seem to like the podcast, and uh, they wanted another episode, and uh, we uh, we had some ideas for some something else we could do. That, that first one was a format of uh, me putting together two hours worth of conversation topics, and this one is going to be a little more uh, uh, freestyle. It won't nearly be as long. This uh, will probably serve as a little bit of a intermediary episode uh, as we try to figure out what the format will be going on um did you guys have any uh, any thoughts or comments on uh, on how the podcast went last time or going back and listening to it is there anything that uh that uh, you'd like to to add to the format or how are you feeling about it i've done a, a couple of podcasts in the past and i just find them quite chill and you know um just very sort of relaxing conversation, I suppose. I mean, I, I'm I'm very inexperienced with the whole thing, so I mean, I will be honest. I I just really enjoyed the the last one that we did because it's just an opportunity to sit with some like-minded people, reminisce about a game that we all like a lot, and you know, that's that's kind of all there is to it for me. I don't have any kind of immediate feedback. It was just fun to be part of, you know. Yeah, no, it was fun, man. Like right. uh, you, you had questions prepared that made it very uh, free flowing. You know, we could. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, that's great. I'm glad you guys. I'm glad you guys liked it. Uh, there are, are uh, you know, there's some different, definitely some things we can do in the in the future. Sorry, I'm a little, I'm a little uh, scatterbrained. I mean, you catch up. You just woke up, man. So did I. Hell I yeah, bro. Earlier. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I slept like three hours and set my alarm for this. Okay, uh, so we are back. I have. Uh, we're recording now, and so here's what we're gonna do, guys. Um, Spud, do you want to uh, give a quick little summary? I feel like I talk too much on this podcast. Spud, do you want to give a, a summary about what I asked you guys to do? Uh, so we recorded some gameplay of Doom Hunter Base, and it's to showcase, I guess, the uh, combat skills of each one of us and how we route the map and ta tackle the different uh, elements of it from, I guess, uh, the environment to the arena fights there's a big arena fight about uh a third way in and uh yeah uh i guess it's to showcase how three different uh doom nerds will approach it yeah it, and it's not reloading into the map it is going through the campaign so we don't have all the upgrades we don't have the ballista yes. yet this is this is how you go this is how you go into that first room on doom hunter base playing on nightmare difficulty having fun showing your style and uh expressing yourself as a player i thought it would be interesting to have like a side by side by side of the three of us and how we play that um before we get to the first one um catch up you're going to be the first up uh, is there anything that you want to say before we start looking at the video yeah, sorry, I'm building. It's still early for me. Um, yeah, the, the the biggest thing about this this sort of set of videos was that, as you said, Mayo, is like we had to do it from a fresh nightmare playthrough, so that the items and the weapons that we have are true to that part of the game. So we haven't got any of the the crazy crazy power weapons just yet. Right. But um, just before we even jump into this, uh, I'm going to be using a lot of meat hook in some arguably unnecessary sections. This is <laughs> right when I was doing an Ultra Nightmare playthrough as well. So this was my kind of like, oh. I was actually doing this map on one of my kind of like quote unquote practice maps before I go into the Ultra Nightmare version. So I'm in the process of trying to build towards my flaming meat hook because it's almost ready. And obviously it matters a great deal in the Doom Hunter fight if you have a flaming meat hook versus not having it because that armor on tap is, is valuable as hell. No pun okay. intended, but uh, <laughs> you're, you're going to see a little bit of unnecessary meat hook, but that's why. I'm just trying to get flaming meat hook, which I do suggest everyone who's doing an Ultra Nightmare is grinding for as soon as possible. Save your weapon points. The second you get the SSG, build into flaming meat hook, and then just start farming for it as early as possible. The earlier you get flaming meat hook in Ultra Nightmare, the better. I, I agree with that. Uh, 
shortly into Doom Hunter Base, I start upgrading that, and this is one of the first rooms where you can get a lot of good be meat hook kills to work towards that upgrade. Yes. So, uh, alright, I'm gonna press play, and uh, catch up, you can comment on whatever we're doing, and then uh, sure. and Spud and I, uh, we can be uh, just reacting and asking questions maybe, or lots of oohs and ahs, uh, and then after the clip finishes, I have two short little selections from this fight that I put at 50% 50 speed. Oh wow, and, uh, I'm beyond mate. If, if, I, if I just, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, I put this together kind of quickly. If I remember correctly, they, uh, they should showcase maybe kind of like a cool kill that you did or a, a, a cool series of events that, you know, next to each other I thought showed like a, a good play or a good strategy. And then I guess you can kind of talk about what, what you see. All right, sure, man. Uh, so, Wait, uh, so here we go, and uh, three, two, one. So one of the big things about this, though, is knowing that um, the reality is you do start to memorize a lot of these arenas. So you know, sure. this was, for me, one of the hardest arenas in the entire game because I would always come super close to dying uh, earlier before I started practicing it. So little things where you know that the pinky always spawns at the back, so yeah. if you have an ice grenade ready... Uh, I see you, you spend the ice grenade, grenade right on the pinky. Do you usually do that? Uh, I do in this room because by the time the larger heavies start to spawn, the ice grenade will come back, so I can just quickly delete the uh, the first pinky kind of as soon as possible. One of All the right. big things I do, especially early, it does become less apparent in the playthrough the longer it goes on, but I really do use the precision bolt a ton. Uh, yeah, I was bolt, expecting to quick. see more of that. Yeah, the, the precision bolt quick scope, uh, it's, it's really, really good. Like Ooh, right there, there just, just being able to shut down uh, any of the flying demons or any of the, the small enemies that you need to just like remove from play anywhere on screen, that kind of instant quick scope. Like right there, I'm, I wait for my meat hook to come back so I can just yeah. get a free tick towards. Um, but yeah, the precision bolt is really good early on for that kind of just instant deletion. If you there, kind of quick that right one. Tick. Yeah, quick scope. That, that's that. an excellent shot right there on the Arachnotron weak point. I like that a lot. It's a really dangerous combo in uh, battle mode, you see. And actually, I didn't start using the precision bolt in these fights anywhere near as much when I, as when I started doing battle mode a lot. Because the uh, precision bolt does 400 damage in battle mode. And before the ballista got its damage changed to 550 from 600, you could just delete, absolutely delete from range with just ballista and precision bolt by itself. And I was like, what if I use that versus the demons in single player? And it just rinses almost most of them. Like right there, just... Precision Bolt versus those enemies is just so good for just... I look at you, I blink, and you're dead. Yeah, clearing out of my fear. I was going to say, you're going to say the ice bomb there for the... Uh, you know it. The I mean, that's a, that's a good decision. Those, like, they just get in your face and tear you up. Yeah, I, I thoroughly Ooh. dislike the flashes. Uh, they're, I mean, they're, they're really fun to fight, but obviously they are extremely problematic because of their damage, their kind of unpredictable movement. So if they have unpredictable movement, just use the ice bomb and, and get in there. And it kind of just shuts them down completely. By this point, you've got lock on rockets. So it's a really easy combo. Yeah, mm -hmm. lock on rockets are a godsend against whiplashes for sure. Yeah, saving all the arsenal for them is paramount. Like with that Mancubus that spawns in the middle of the map there, he's, you know, as long as you're on the outside of the arena there, you're pretty safe. All right, good. So Ketchup, you work your way around the perimeter a lot, I see, when, when you play. I think it's because I play very ranged heavy. I, I There's a lot of emphasis on precision. I, there really is, especially early on, I use the precision bolt so much. And also I play with the uh, dot crosshair. So there's there's l as little on the on the screen as possible. And center gun is just something I've always done. Because is, is there a reason that you play dot crosshair? Is it just a um, an aesthetic preference? I prefer having as little on the screen as possible. Uh, it's okay. it's just something I've always done. Uh, when I play Quake Champions, I play on a very small crosshair as well. I, I really like not very large crosshairs. It's just something, it's definitely sure. a preference thing, but I've always liked small crosshairs. Uh, the only exception is when I'm playing battle mode, I will go full crosshair because I play exclusively the Revenant in battle mode. And you need the full crosshair as the Revenant because it tells you uh, what your jetpack fuel is. You can't really... Uh look at your jetpack fuel as conveniently without the full crosshair so dot crosshair with revenant is a bit of a hindrance so i change but if it's campaign it's always dot that's interesting i, I go full crosshair because uh, i like seeing the full charge on the heat blast and also crucial is that 
I use a lot of remote detonation, but I also use lock-on sometimes, and I need to know which mod I have equipped, and I, I, there's other ways to see it, but seeing the crosshair is just the easiest way to see which mod you have equipped for that, and when I go for, uh, for a remote detonation stagger and uh, I accidentally just shoot a rocket over someone's head and can't detonate it, I just feel like an idiot, so... <laughs> Uh, all right, so I'm going to lo load up um, these slow motion clips here. Are you guys ready? Sure. Yeah, man. Let's do that again. All I'm right. curious to see what we so, do, actually. All right, so you come up here, and then this is this quick. quick that's strike. just a really beautiful <laughs> shot from far away, and then you go straight in for a lock-on rocket, and you just take out the Arachnotron like that. And then that last precision shot for good measure. Yeah, so that right there is the trick to getting those kind of shots with Precision Bolt is you kind of, the longer you play, you start to get a little bit more of a sixth sense for kind of when you zoom in where the crosshair is going to go because it's, it's almost completely accurate to where you're aiming at the time anyway. So that kind of, it really is a quick scope, just the, the, the right click, uh, the right mouse, left mouse. Well, I, liked, I liked what you did there. I'm going to rewind it a little bit. Sure. Uh, when the Hell Knight comes at you and you meet Hook away and you use that as an opportunity for Chainsaw because you know you have a second. And then here you drop a grenade on your left and move right. So you take out two sides at once. I think that was yeah. really good. Yeah, grenades are absolutely fantastic for just covering areas that... It's because you've got that instant damage and the instant splash that if there is that one area that in the spur of the moment you're like, I just want to get rid of these guys. You just It's like effortless, right? There's there's no execution. You just look there and do your equipment button and that's it while you're moving around. That was a and nice really uh, helpful. little combo on the Hell Knight there. I'm going to rewind that a little. Where he comes in and then you go... Precision. What is it? Precision combat double and then he's down because you already gave a little damage on him that was Snap. yeah man precision bolt it, it it comes out so quickly that you can absolutely use it as a reliable source of combos for sure all right so here's the next one okay you so you go for the freeze and the lock on just not playing around with the whiplash at all i save my ice bombs for whiplashes a lot especially in the um for those that have done ultra nightmare cultist base the red room the flaming red room near the sure. end sure uh, sure. I know everyone, a lot of people like saving their ice bombs for Mancubus and stuff, but I'd rather keep the uh, the cue ball alive, and I always, always, always use my ice bomb on the whiplash down there, because that's the <laughs> one I fear the most, like I hate it. But thankfully, uh, uh, there's solutions, and my solution's always to just freeze it. I like that uh, that little sequence right, right here. You go off the jump pad, sticky bomb <clears throat> on the right, and then... You, you go for the prison shot, you don't quite get it there, and then, so you just sticky bomb, you're just checking around you in the air, and then that, bam, that falling precision shot into a meat hook shotgun. That's just a, a nice little showcase of quick weapon switching in the air, like observing everything below you and taking advantage of it. I thought that was really nice. Yeah, being in the air, like in that situation when you've got that much height is, is quite useful because you can dash if you need to, but the reality is the enemies all have projectiles, so... If you're going that high up in that vertical, it can be quite hard for them to hit you because a lot of their projectiles arc, don't they? So sure. it's quite simple to... Being in the air is not a bad shout. And you, you pointed out that I stay on the sidelines a lot. I, I play very range heavy uh, what I play because it's just... If I rely heavily on my accuracy and my sort of pin, pinpoint accuracy with Ballista... I don't have the Ballista in this clip, but I use it a lot when I, when I play. Uh, using the, the center of the map can just be a bit risky. And if you do go in for big fights, I always make sure I've got like, you know, ice bomb ready or something. If I need to disengage one big enemy or one heavy, I can just freeze it, get out, and then go back to that kind of hit and run style, I suppose. I just try and I just try and stay safe on higher difficulties. Do you guys upgrade the ice bomb first? Is that one of your main suit upgrades? Yeah, it's the first thing I start really building into. I do uh, quick switching first, and then I do... Uh, I do the immunity to barrels because I've accidentally blown myself up M more times <laughs> than I, I would be embarrassed to admit in Ultra Nightmare. Uh, but then I really, yeah, so the biggest thing is I do quick switching and then the dash. And then once that's done, I just start pumping into all ice grenade and just making that better. Spud, same. what about you? I, 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 I'm same on the mobility. I get, I get the mobility first. Uh, and then once it's towards Doom, uh, no, yeah. Uh, Doom Hunter base. I'm putting all the points into uh, the 
extra damage on the ice bomb first. I think it requires five points. And, uh, yeah, that's my first go-to because, you know, like if you drop that on a Whiplash or a Mank, you, you know, you don't need the points to go onto, like, frozen uh, ice bombs, like, lasting longer. If the damage output is going to be so high, you'll get rid of them quick anyway. So I go for that and, uh, yeah, just delete things real quick. Definitely also worth mentioning that the extra damage will go a long way because by that point you're unlikely, you're extremely unlikely, well no, it's impossible actually, sorry, to have the lock-on burst upgraded because you don't even start encountering Prowlers until Doom Hunter base. So it's mm. like, if you start building into that point really early on, uh, extra damage off Ice Grenade, you're not going to be able to find Prowlers to make the lock-on burst recharge or double burst as fast as it is. You know, that, that's like an end game thing where you got a lock-on burst, like was it 15 Prowlers or something? Yeah, 15, and yeah. yeah, that's a game changer, and you would wouldn't necessarily need the extra damage if you had that, but you're not going to have that until a couple of levels in, most likely. So mm. the extra damage on one burst will go a long way. Mm. All right, so uh, I'm going to open up the um, next one. The next one up is is mine. All right, here oh, we go. Good. And your recording quality is so okay. Much I start immediately spraying plasma to charge heat blast, and then stagger with remote detonation nice. on the pinky. That is smooth. I need to I like steal that. your we're, we're, quality we're... tech. <laughs> <laughs> so I spray a lot of plasma charging up that heat blast. I just really like spraying, spraying plasma. See, I watched your video on your loadouts that you go for. You do use the micro missiles a lot more than a lot of people I see. Yeah, I really do. I just they're they're like a, a great kind of like mid range weapon and like a sp spray around kind of thing. That's a good use of the, uh, the remote debt to get those staggers and the pinkies there. Much more reliable dealing with them. There you go. See, like, I go for the stagger just to interrupt whatever animation they might be doing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you play a lot more up close, and that's the one thing I always notice in comparison is that because I play so range heavy, I'm, I don't get as many opportunities to use the flame belch, and I think that's one of my, one of my weaknesses from that style, whereas when I watch yours, it's like always forever like right there just just that free yeah. armor on Fla flame belch and here. heat blast mm. well, i guess if you're taking more damage you gotta Ooh. get it back as well well that's I, I three play HP. all yeah i'm i'm all in man <laughs> that is uh that's a close one there so you want okay I, uh, there i see the whiplash i don't know if you saw it there he is and then just the that micro missile spray down nice Blood Punch, just get out of my way, two zombies. See, both playstyles work uh, still pretty well. Like, uh, you're you're in the center of the map there a lot more, but you're, you've been hanging under the uh, the crossover there. It's when you, mm -hmm. you're standing on the crossover, you tend to uh, be a bit more of a magnet for shots more. So sure. you still play that pretty smart. I wasn't wasn't too all in. Uh, you did the fight I... in like you did the fight in like half the speed. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, double the speed. What's, what's the term? You, did, you were faster, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I look at the clips, I don't know how much... Yeah, uh, like, it's like 50 megs. How's the, how's the speed run, that one? Did that pretty clean, man. Uh, I, I got a couple... I think I'm somewhere uh, in between you guys, so I'll even it out. <laughs> actually, that's that's that was the interesting thing about this, is that, like, Ketchup and I have, like, really like, kind of different play styles, and then Spud Hunter is, like, somewhere in the middle. It's pretty cool. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna open up a couple of clips from that one. But this really goes to show just the the, the importance of memory. I think massively. So this clip, that revenant just got absolutely deleted. But it, a huge part of this is like what makes when you look at people that play on Nightmare and Ultra Nightmare, you're like, man, you make it look so simple. It's because you know we're remembering what demon spawns when and where and hmm. making sure you've got the right weapon for it. Maybe do you have the right you know, mod ready or whatever it is. Bro, I never get tired of watching this plasma. I really love watching a good plasma. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna back up a little bit to, to the beginning of this part here. Um, okay, af after the Revenant gets shot, um, I throw a grenade on my left because I don't know what's coming. It's just a preemptive thing. I, I spray heat into this, and then the pinky comes by, and so I throw a remote detonation just in case he's turning around to come at me. To stop his animation, and then I see a group and use that for flame belch and, and a charge blast for the armor. And I set down a big armor pool. This is something I'm trying to do more: is setting down pools of armor. 
um, when I'm at full uh, at full armor, just in case something hits me in the next five to ten seconds, I have this big source of armor just sitting there waiting to be picked up. And that's, that's been cool, helping. That's been helping me a lot in a in a more chaotic play style. Okay. Uh, and then... Do you know Do you know whether a pinky gets staggered by the uh, remote detonate even if you hit it in the armored area? Is it just universal? Or? Mm, I don't know. I couldn't say for sure. But I, I always shoot it over its head or to its side anyway. Hmm. Okay. Here's the second clip. All right. That's when I see the whiplash go up. And I'm not quite sure how I'm going to encounter him. That's why I switched to the micro missiles. And then there he is. Staggering shots in there. And us. And then it, there you go. And I detonate it just to stop him from going anywhere. Beautiful. Right. Dude, that uh, yeah, could cause a blast. Either. You can you can go in there with a meat hook. You're not going to risk getting slapped. Yeah. Yeah. That that concussive blast, man. It's like it's it, like it's not choice. It, is not just just about like the damage of the rocket. It's that everything in that vicinity is gonna stop moving. It's it's pretty nice. Um, it almost works kind of like a stun bomb in a way. Um, all right, Spud, are you ready? To, uh, if you guys, I don't know if you guys have any other comments or questions about that, but uh, Spud, we can move on to yours if you want. Yeah, no, that was that was pretty clean, man. Like I said, uh, mine coming up here is probably gonna be a little bit more in between. Uh, yeah both both those play styles like I, I tend to stay on the outside a lot but then towards the middle of the arena fight i'm straight in the guts okay. uh, <laughs> that's, that's the spot yeah. on the way man cerebral yeah, yeah. you're right in there <laughs> cerebrally in the guts uh, what i what i find actually fascinating when when you get this footage up uh it's all three of us have a different way of dealing with that first pinky yeah. uh, yes yeah you 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 uh what is it you, you use the um the concussion blast uh, Mayo and ketchup. You use the ice bomb on him. Me, I just came in with a meat hook and a, a slap to the face with the <laughs> the, uh, the the punch. <laughs> That's so there's probably going to be someone out there watching the podcast foaming at the mouth that I use an ice bomb on it. But I'm like, hey man, I'm not going to use it anywhere else. Whiplash. Yeah. Just, you know, I'm going to look at my watch. The whiplash doesn't spawn until a good few more minutes. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, have I'll have it back. I'll have it back. Yeah, it's interesting that that people use ice bomb differently. Like. Uh, Ice bomb can be tactical, like to focus down a problematic enemy, but it can also be a panic button, you know, like oh mm -hmm. god, what's happening? Throw an ice bomb down on the ground, and yeah, then you're grace, okay yeah. for a second. Like there's different ways to use it. All right, mm -hmm. Spud, here we go. Here we go. I love how we all Coming must all exclusively use the bloody <laughs> super shotgun, <laughs> <laughs> dude. That got <laughs> destroyed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think after this, I tend to use a bit of the, uh, uh, the plasma on uh, the revenants coming up. First one there, I just delete straight away with a shotgun. Uh, here I'm trying oh, to find my way around the... Uh, see, that, there you were trying yeah, to be cute. That was the you're trying to be, that was, You're yeah. trying to be cute with like a, a that down precision shot yeah. on a pinky. But I hit his head or something, yeah. <laughs> just, just missed the towel. Well, there you go, there's really that heat pretty, blast. Uh, yeah. And that's, that's the nice. heat blast there because you get the extra extra bit of damage and whatnot. Um, yeah, that full but, uh, disable. Yeah, but it, it's still risky. Like it's 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 a nice quick way to like dis disable the weak points on the um, mm -hmm. on the revenant. But if you're not fast enough, you can you can do like a double melee attack on you. That revenants are so much more aggressive in this game. I yeah, love it. yeah. So stylish but risky. Mm -hmm. You're pretty accurate with those rockets. Yeah, so it's the old the old quake skills coming in, <laughs> uh, and then here I'm just uh, gonna head over to the mancubus in the middle. Uh, I go for the Th weak points over here. I didn't, yeah, that yeah. was pretty cute, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just trying going for the stylish shots. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, no, that was then, good too. I'm surprised that zombie wasn't a chainsaw. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that the uh, whiplash is the last one left here, so I don't really need to stress out too much about ammo and resources. Sure. And then, uh, Come up. yeah, just finish off the glass creeps and then Bob's your uncle. <laughs> that, I love that last random blood punch on a zombie. You're just like, eh, well, whatever. <laughs> yeah, slap. Get him out of here. 
Get him out of here. Um, the first time I watched that, I was like, oh, that's that's going to be the chainsaw. And then you just, like, pause for a second, and then... <laughs> <laughs> I never knew there was a sentinel battery down there. Yeah, got the, the, I always the forget secret, about yeah, it. Yeah. I always forget I've never, never got that on my playthrough. <laughs> All right, so here's a... Spud actually has three slow motion clips. Feel special. Oh, wow. Here we go. All right, here's the first one. This is just, like, flying through here. I, I like this I like this a lot. You throw down a grenade up on the Arachnotron. There. Quick grenade. I want to come around, yeah. Yeah, Give him and a then bit of a stunning that, case. Yeah, like, exactly. It stuns him, up. and then that sets up the precision bolt. That is so yeah. nice. And Can't then he should be it. down. This, this one was, was like a cricket. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> There's not two inaccurate. We've got one Australia, one UK. Yeah. <laughs> We're okay, unofficial that's, rivals now. That's a good rocket. There's Spy Hunter coming up in the with the, the, the accurate rockets there. And then there you go. Uh, oh, a nice the side to side flame belch to get anybody in that area. That's and good. there it is, right in the cranium. Yeah. You could say he's turning up the heat. <laughs> oh, no. Back to you, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the next clip. Oh, yeah, it's a solace, make sure. Yeah, here's the Mancubus kill. This is just this, so good. This is why right I on. like using uh, air control as well. Because, like, you see how like I stop the movement mid mid air there just right. to like hover a little right. bit and straight. So, this is a bit then... grenade overkill. You do yeah. freeze and regular grenade. Yeah. But it gets the job done. Alright. And, uh, okay, last clip. I honestly can't imagine playing this game without air control. Yeah, I can't either. Okay, what do we got here? This is, that's nice. You get the rocket on the ground and the shotgun coming down, and then the shotgun coming up, and he's down. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna I'm, gonna I'm gonna replay that. A bit okay, so acrobatic. you fly up, you see the whiplash, and you hit him with a rocket on your way down. And then the shotgun right before you hit the ground. That's it. You, it's still pretty accurate that distance too, the super shotgun. Yeah. It doesn't have uh, a really widespread. Okay, yeah, that's just a really nice takedown on a whiplash. I like that. Oh, sweet. It's, it's good to see the different, uh, different approaches, big time. Uh, yeah, I thought that like, might be uh, helpful to some people, maybe. Or entertaining, yeah, yeah, at least. Well, I, I, I find... Honestly... Well, continue. Sorry. Just, no, just called no, no, right. me up. No, you're right. Like, I was just going to say, like, Ketchup's um, approach was uh, much safer, but it was more efficient, too. Like, there wasn't really any time you saw him lose HP, whereas, like, yourself and myself, Mayor... Uh, sorry, yourself, Mayor, and myself. Um, you, me, and I, sorry. Uh, yeah, we, we basically, you know, had a few moments there where we lost a fair bit of HP. Um sort of styling in the middle, you know what I mean? So I do like the uh, the juxtaposition big time. Sure, I'm replaying all three main clips as we talk about it. Yeah, man, no worries. I just love, I I thought I would really dislike, when I first started using the heavy cannon, I was kind of disappointed. I thought it felt really kind of clunky and a bit sluggish. And then like the moment I got precision bow, it's like, oh. <laughs> Makes sense now, yeah. It's No, it's all about the mods, it really, really is. Yeah, and the mas yeah, those masteries on them. You get extra damage. Speaking, the, speaking the of precision bolt, uh, when I first started doing my Ultra Nightmare runs, Spot Hunter, I actually watched your video on Ultra Nightmare, and you talked about how how good precision bolt was, and uh, combined with uh, Chrono Strike in the in the early game, it can really help you with enemy weak points, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna listen to this guy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I don't use precision bolt, but you know that's that it is true. And so I did that, and I had 25 of the worst runs I've ever had. <laughs> and I was like, "Fuck this! I'm going back to micro missiles." And that first that that first return to micro missiles, I made it to Necroval too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, I, and I was and I was like, you know, it was like he's totally right. Everything he said about the precision ball and Corona Strike, it's true, but it doesn't complement my play style. Yeah, and, and I yeah. was like, it just kind of like really opened my eyes and kind of reinforced that that like, you know, some things, you know, I guess you could say are objectively stronger, but mm. if they don't complement your strengths, then you can and it can actually detrimental. It was it was interesting, you know. Mm. Well, see, I, I think uh, things evolve as well. Like, I don't actually 
play with it anymore because I found that uh, after memorizing a lot of the spawns and my own confidence and my accuracy and whatnot, that having the Chrono Strike sort of felt obsolete. You know what I mean? Yes. And that was sort of weeks after the the uh, the, the the guide. You know, so it's funny how things mm-hmm. can sort of feel obsolete after a while. But I like, guess you know, if you're if you're not familiar with every single spawn and everything that's in the arenas, sometimes that can be a bit of a saving grace to slow things down a little. Sure, um, I, I, I it it makes sense. It really yeah. really does. And uh, and I but I I don't know. As soon as I went back to micro missiles, I was like, oh yeah, this is how I play the game, right? Yeah, yeah. And then I just I. I can't do precision bolt, man. I just it's it's awesome and it's fun too, but I, man, I I don't play like myself and I You know what's uh, addictive I, with the micro missiles? The adrenaline. The haste mode. Hmm. That is just insane when you've got that on. Because <laughs> that's in what uh yeah, there's a there's the, a, and, and, and adrenaline and Necrovolt too. And you can just wipe out half the arena with that with the micro missiles so fast, it's so good. Isn't that the arena where you see a lot of the Unmaki? Yeah, that too, yeah. And you can share remember. both, I guess. Yeah, no, it definitely is, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, so there's a lot of, there's like a, like, uh, blue lava in there and whatnot. I'm just about to reach those levels on my Ultra Nightmare. <laughs> oh, nice, oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, I just did Taras Nabad, and obviously I've had to take about a week away, so I need to de-rust before I continue, but it's going to be good. Excited for it. Nice, good luck, good luck. you got to remember that room, um... There's a corridor with a whiplash and a marauder, very tight corridor. Oh, my oh God. I'm but, sure Ketchup remembers yeah. that room just fine. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, I week one, week one of Doom Eternal's release, I'd done uh, a, a Ultra Violence, and then I jumped straight into a nightmare playthrough that I was streaming. And at that time, I still hadn't practiced any demon fights, so I didn't really know the the tech, you know, the the, the secrets to beating the harder demons and the bosses and whatever. So there's that that room where there's a whiplash and a marauder. Um, I got stuck there for a about like 30 minutes because he because i had no health and the marauder i didn't know how to kill the marauder i would just wait for him to attack hit him with like one ballista and leave it i didn't realize that when he staggered you could do extra damage and stuff like that but uh i got stuck for like half an hour and i'm raging all the way through and i'm like this is gonna be a funny youtube highlight so i turn it into like a 10 minute supercut and uh even to this day i get comments upon comments upon comments of ugh Look at this! Look at this trash Doom play. Clearly, no idea. Clearly, <laughs> yeah, no idea no how, idea to, what you're how doing. to fight the Marauder. You should watch Under the Mayo's video on the Marauder, and it will help you. Actually, <laughs> uh, well, you know, that's the <laughs> way Thanks, things are Mayo. always going to be. Thanks, Mayo. You're, you're yeah, a good friend. And, you know, I did it. I did it specifically in response to you. <laughs> I inspired you. I inspired you, man. Because at least I gave it a good go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we'll let this these last clips uh, play out, and um, you know, I got a couple of the little topics. Um, you guys want to tell uh, tell the audience what your key bindings are? Oh yeah, very mouse sure. focused. That's the yeah. thing. Very, very, very mouse focused. Yeah, um, I've actually oh, not to not to shamelessly self plug, but if anyone's interested, I do actually have a video on YouTube where I go over it um, because people were asking me, you know, once I did that quick switching video at the beginning. But my key bindings are very close. I don't I don't like key bindings that are too far away. I, I just find a lot more comfort if they're close range. Uh, so a lot of my keys are within like tiny reachable distance, but the important weapons that are really far away, like super shotgun and ballista and chain gun and that, uh, that's all bound to my mouse. So I actually have mouse scroll up as my super shotgun, mouse scroll down as ballista, and I actually have mouse click to get the chain gun out. So three weapons are all tied to mouse wheel. And uh, I've got Flame Belch tied to the the first left-hand mouse button, which is exclusive to my mouse because I use a uh, uh, Razer Basilisk mouse. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one of my mouse buttons on the left is uh, Flame Belch, and the second one on the left is Equipment Usage. So a bunch of weapons and stuff that I need like now, like right now, I don't even have to do any executional reach at all because it's all tied to my right hand, which is really useful. That's interesting. Um, yeah, nice. There's there's uh, there's a lot of people that um, that might uh, be against using uh, uh, mouse buttons like purists when it comes to aim because it, it's like you're you're sort of move, you're using your mouth, uh, your thumb and uh, it's sort of affecting the way you sort of grip the the, the mouse. But I, I kind of don't really 
adhere to that that rule too much because uh, I mean it's doom. It's not like you're trying to like always unless you're using the precision bolt. You're not always trying to like quick scope headshots and whatnot. Um, so I use mouse uh, four and five for super shotgun and rocket launcher, and then around my WASD, uh, I'm using like ZX for ballista, uh, chain gun, and uh, uh, F for equipment. Uh, or, you know, like it's just all around the, the the movement. You know, so like my fingers aren't. My, basically, my hand, my, my two hands aren't actually moving anywhere. They're just always staying still. You know, uh, you know, if you're if you're having to move your hand across the keyboard at any point, you're going to be slowing down your gameplay big time. So, agree. Yeah, just always, yeah, just having having your binds all around uh, your, your, your main positions on the, on, on the uh, the keyboard and mouse is pretty much paramount. You guys didn't uh, set glory kill to F in Doom Eternal. Did neither of you guys do that? No, actually. Okay. No. Well, uh, it's because F by default was glory kill in 2016. And I had like 700 hours yeah. in that game. <laughs> and so uh, when I opened up Eternal and I looked at the controls and it said E for, and I was like, no. <laughs> so I put that as F and then I put E as my equipment launcher. And so, oh, nice. uh, and, uh, and then on my on my mouse my mouse 4 mouse 5 on the side i always have those in every game i play that has guns the the furthest one is primary and the back one is like whatever prey and spray is like a submachine gun or something like that so doom it would be combat shotgun and plasma rifle or if it's fear, then it's like the first one is shotgun and the second one is submachine gun or something like that. But if it's like Resident Evil, the first one is pistol and the second one is shotgun because, you know, the pistol, you need that to be more tactical. Um, and uh, catch up, I'm with you on, on the multifunction of the mouse wheel. On my mouse wheel, pressing in the mouse wheel is, um, is weapon mod switch. And then spinning up on the mouse wheel is BFG and down on the mouse wheel is chainsaw. Oh, and nice. it is it is really satisfying to spin the mouse wheel down for the chainsaw. <laughs> you, you like you see something <laughs> coming in a panic and you're like, "Oh god." Zzz, and you just kind of sit back <laughs> and watch the animation and listen to the mouse spin. That I I'm in love with that. And then um, I have a Logitech 502 Hero and it has a third button on the left side for a DPI change, and through uh, through G-Hub, I'm able to uh, set that to be a different button. So I, I make that G or H on the keyboard, and then I assign that to equipment changer. So on my on my left thumb, I have combat shotgun and plasma rifle as the two buttons. And then there's that small button under it that would normally change your DPI. But that is actually the way that I change between grenade and ice bomb. And that feels really, really comfortable. Oh, it's nice. It's definitely worth mentioning too that um, the mouse bindings I have in uh, Quake are very sorry in Doom. That degree of mouse stuff I wouldn't do in a, a sort of more precise shooter like Quake because when I play Quake I don't have anything bound to uh, the left the left buttons for that actual reason. Um, but in Doom it's kind of like because Doom has a lot of enemies that are like larger. There's something about Doom's aiming that feels like I don't know whether it's just because I've played Doom for a long time, but none of the enemies are really particularly hard to hit because a lot of them are quite large and accuracy is quite forgiving against them so it's like even if it's like there were to be like a uh what's the word to use here even if there was a small chance that accuracy when you have mouse bindings is going to be potentially be hindered or not as fast or whatever the hell it might be i really don't notice it i really don't notice it in doom because just the enemies are, are just larger right that there's something about them that's a bit more forgiving than like a, a super micro pinpoint fps uh where sure, it's, it's like it what is. spud said like if, if there's a game where like you know you have to try and hit headshots on everything all the time or whatever it is doom is just not that kind of game you can look at something and hit it so it's like there's there's less there's less need being pinpoint helps but 
I really don't think that you're as hindered really to kind of. It's more, it's more about your your strategy, weapon choice, and and resource control and whatnot than yeah, exactly. Crazy, you can hit crazy shots. But if you run out of ammo, yeah. you're dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah you're, you're spinning up a 12 barrel mini gun, mini gun on a 15 foot tall flaming baron. You, you don't yeah, need yeah, to. Yeah. You're not hiding exactly. behind cover. You're not hiding behind cover and sniping a soldier from across yeah. the field. It's just not that kind of game. I and you know what to- that. That's oh, that's why it plays better. That's why it plays well on console. Doom is like the only game that I can play with a controller if I have to, you know, because you know it's a shotgun to a, a Hell Knight's chest. It's not, it's not zooming in on something that's a hundred feet away with a sniper rifle. Yeah, man. I wanted to really just stress that because uh, just in case anyone's listening to this and you know you're unsure about your bindings and you know you try and bind something to a mouse and someone's like you shouldn't be doing that just take it from us that it's not a problem right do what you want that's, that's the, that's yeah, the bottom do what line you want. i mean yeah, we are we're all works. obviously doing different things and we're all having a great time um let's see i don't know if there's anything else here um what do you guys think about the empowered demons I have not experienced it yet because, like I said, uh, since since the latest patch, I've actually not had the chance to play it because I've been super rammed with you know real life stuff. I suppose um, I get to work from home doing what I do, so I've been super busy with all that. But I've heard I've friends of mine that play it have really enjoyed it actually. But it's I'm I'm almost sad to say that I have no contribution towards it because I haven't experienced it yet. All right, Spud. Yeah. Uh... I've 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 had a couple interactions with them on a couple runs recently, and they uh, they certainly are uh, empowered. It's in the title. I think if anyone sort of uh, gets triggered by them, uh, they they can be disabled if you go into the menu. Just for anyone out there, because I'm pretty sure they're enabled by default now. They are. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think it I think it's a cheeky and fun way uh, addition to the game. Uh, I was expecting it to be on release. But uh, yeah, there's, there's more stuff that they'll sprinkle in, like the invasion mode. Um, All right, well, yeah. Spot, I, I have a question. Have you seen anyone that's not on your friends list? Uh, not, uh, not that. I... Whenever you see an empowered demon, do you no. recognize the name that it killed? Uh, no, I've only I've only uh, done a couple runs with it on since. Okay. Well, so, here, here's, yeah. here's, here's here's the thing. I, don't, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't recognized a couple of the names, so yeah. I, I'm not uh, a big social but, gamer, and especially on Steam, I don't. I have like five people on my friends list, and yeah. I've only got like one guy on there that plays Doom, and Empower Demons appears to be limited to the people on your friends list. Hmm. And well, I, think, I do I'm not saying I'm Mr. Popular, popular, but I right. do have a huge list. So, but that was like built up over time as well. Un- yeah, um, under- understandable. So uh, it's probably I, I just, because I have a lot of Steam friends that change their name and whatnot. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was curious about it because, like, I thought I thought it was gonna be, uh, you know, all around the world, you know, players, you know, the demons that killed them are gonna come into random players' games. I I I, I was imagining that, but instead, every empowered demon is just a cackle demon that killed my friend Mike. Yeah, yeah. Poor <laughs> <Well>, Mike. <laughs> I'm just yeah, like, oh, weird. Mike, that damn cackle demon got you again. <laughs> and that's going to be the beauty of it. It's always going to be the same cheesy demon, uh, demons, you know. I, I, I know the one you're probably thinking of, too. It's going to be, what, uh, Hell on Earth, the first map, uh, the elevator <laughs> shaft, the two cackos that spawn in that room, that, that arena yeah. fight there. Oh, man. I've, I've had that creep on me so many times when I'm trying to deal with the Arachnotron in there. And it just does a chomp on you. Uh, I got uh, I got two more topics uh, for today. Um, I was curious if any of you guys have identified like mistakes that you keep repeating or bad habits that you think you have when you play. Is there something that you're trying to uh, trying to overcome? Uh, for me, it was probably in the early days uh, not experimenting enough with the the metas. Uh, I I sort of disregarded a few weapon upgrades that evidently over time proved to be <laughs> low detonation yeah yeah exactly uh much more superior i still love the quick lock though no no um, if quick lock is better it is it's more yeah. powerful but it's just that remote detonation is more dynamic and yeah is it's not about damage it's about it's about space control it's it's, it's totally mm-hmm. different mm-hmm 
Mm. Mm. Yeah, that would be uh, one of them, and then probably getting a little too too comfortable with Revenants close range. Because I always tend to go yeah. for Heat Blast and then and, and finish them off, but they can they can get in a couple quick melees. I, I, mm. I'd assume yours would be the Gargoyles. <laughs> Getting oh, too close to them. <laughs> man. No, well, I mean, I, I've become smarter about them ever since that awful death. But, um, <laughs> I, I, my, my hate is still for the the Barons. The Barons just drive me crazy, man. <laughs> I, just, uh, I know there's fast ways to take them down and everything, but whenever they come in, I'm just like, oh, man. Like those two Barons on that one section of Mars core, you know mm. what I mean? When you mm. have to, like that long jump and those two oh, yeah. barons are down there and there's a carcass there and it's just like oh do you man. use the bfg in that at all because uh, every uh, yes i, I do it. yes i, I do yeah. and they the and they BFG don't that. die yeah because <laughs> that's where you got the, the challenge as well where you got to get so many bfg kills so i save it for because there's two bfg shots where you really milk it it's that horde of zombies before it and then mm. that that big open space there with the, the the barons yeah i use both bfgs for that see what one of the hardest one of the hardest bfg rooms is or one of the rooms where bfg becomes really mandatory for me personally is uh you know the sewers when you're in taras nabad and it's that very very close quarters fight where a baron spawns and arch file spawns like that that's fight is a, really scary without BFG. that's a scary room yeah wow any uh, any habits, mistakes, or anything like that? Uh, catch up that's been on your mind. I know you said you haven't played very much because you've been really busy. But even before that, is there like a a playing habit that you just you know you have, or maybe applies to other games too? Something you need to work on. Um, I think for me, it's more the fact that I keep knowing that I should use uh, flame belch more, yet I don't. And it's it's like I said, a kind of knock on effect. I think it's because of how ranged heavy I play that <clears throat> I don't have an opportunity to use Flame Belch much from far away. So by the time we get close, like, I'll use it once. And then I just I just don't have that kind of, like, muscle memory for understanding just how quick Flame Belch comes back when you build into the cool, the quick cooldown. Um, so a lot of the time, if I do a fight and I use the Flame Belch, okay, maybe I'll use it again. But then if there's a fight and I die, every time I die, I look at my resources, Flame Belch is back and I didn't use it. And I'm like, no. ugh. I, I, it's, it's this idea that I, I just don't think I, I use it enough. I don't use it as as like a, as much of an integral. It's ready, so you use it. You just get that armor. You get that armor on tap. I almost feel like I, I start using the flame belch less as well once I get flaming hook, because I'm like, okay, well now I just get armor whenever I want. And I almost like I don't I don't split them evenly, right? So I use the flaming hook and flame belch. Like my armor game in general could definitely, definitely, definitely be a lot better. It is, it's going well so far. Like I've almost done. I'm taking this Ultra Nightmare playthrough so carefully, man. I really don't want to have to do it all again. But, uh... You yeah, will, that, that, probably. That, 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 that's <laughs> one thing. That's one thing I've got to do, though. Flame Belch all the way. Until you get to... Until you get to Erdak and get stuck on a wall. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah I, I'm, I got, I'm, I'm I got very nervous like about that. those last levels, man. I'm nervous about those last levels. I'm really good at the first levels now, though. Cult's base, no problem. Easy. <laughs> oh, man. Um... You know what, uh, to wrap it up, do um, you guys want to give us any uh, any battle mode highlights or recaps of, uh, of the, the last events? Like, what's been going on there? Is there any, are there any uh, matches that uh, the audience should check out or any, uh, any clips, highlights? Well, the latest week that Tokyo and I did was uh, a Mancubus, a Mancubus week, basically. Uh, oh, that the one... update. Yes, it was since the patch. So the Mancubus got those, uh, those buffs where the Mancubus is... It takes less damage from the ballista, and it's now 250 damage if memory serves, I think. And uh, we then had, yeah, so we had a Friday Night Fights episode with, uh, it was King Dime. So this, if it, those that follow speedrunning Doom, you'll know who King, King Dime is. He's a speedrunning legend and a really nice guy, actually. Really nice guy. Shouts to him. He went up against Nero Redgrave and Moon Marooned, and they've played together a whole bunch since kind of the beginning. But Moon Marooned is almost exclusively like a Mancubus main, and Nero is a bit more of a shot caller, plays the, a, a variety of demons for different maps. They have a lot of wombo combos with the Mancubus shred ability, uh, you know, being able to just melt the health down. 
And uh, on the final map, they even rocked double Mancubus. So if anyone wants to see some really funky battle mode, at the highest level, of course, uh, with a, a lot of Mancubus coming through, who is normally considered one of the weaker demons in the mode, uh, definitely go and check out the latest edition. You can find it on my YouTube. That's where the VOD is. I kind of cleaned up uh, a little bit of the video and stuff like that. And now we're in uh, the YouTube VOD as always, kind of like the better, the better way to catch the show if you missed it. So you can go to youtube.com forward slash pndknm, I believe is the link. If it's wrong, then... Just you know, find me on YouTube or whatever. <laughs> it's there, I promise. <laughs> I promise hey, it's there. Hey, Ketchup, congratulations on the 100 subscribers. I know you've been at this for a while, so you deserve it. Yeah, I really appreciate it, man. It's uh, I never thought we'd hit the 100k mark, but um, yeah, it kind of just happened yesterday. Like, just while we were in the middle of a call, it just... Oh, wait, we've got past 100k. Bloody hell. Uh, it's, uh, I, feel, I feel bad that I've not got a big video to release kind of like right on time with it. But All right, know, like uh, a 100k subscriber special. Yeah, we, we, there, are, there are plans that we're going to do, uh, Mustard and myself, my brother. For those that don't know, my brother and I run the channel together. Um, we've got some stuff. It's just I've been so busy, I've not been able to get it out. Like, I've not been able to get anything big f for it yet. And I feel generally really bad about it. So I'm going to try and do some something big to celebrate. And thanks, everyone, for your support if you're watching and have supported the channel. Love you very much. Excellent. So, uh, guys, uh, going forward with this uh, podcast, we've gotten some uh, some suggestions, some requests to bring on some other players, and I think that could be a really cool thing. I mean, I love talking to you guys, but I I think we're gonna run out of things to say if it's just the three of us. So, um, yeah, man, uh, you do you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, so I've uh, contacted Midnight, and Midnight is uh, you know he he has a very active doom channel as uh, people listening to this will know he does a lot of things on uh, on doom lore a little bit of gameplay but he really likes to focus on the story and i thought it could be uh, interesting to bring him on maybe uh, talk some story stuff see you see what he knows see if he has uh, new theories new developments in lore stuff i've kind of checked out but he's still pretty active on that and um i was thinking that maybe for every guest that we bring on, maybe we do what we just did with the Doom Hunter base video, where we ask them to send us some clips of gameplay that they're particularly proud of, and we can see how they play and talk about it. I, what do you think about that dynamic? Yeah, I think that's a really good way of uh, discovering uh, everyone's play styles and, and showing off metas and whatnot, because there's a lot of people that have... I mean, the speedrunning community show, showcases the fact there's so many different ways to approach the game. Um, uh, there was something I learned from Zero Master alone on Doom Hunter base, which you didn't see in the gameplay clips we sent we did today. But it's it's something I did earlier before that arena fight. There's the part where you get off the train, and uh, sometimes there's like a, a, an RNG chance of a, an imp spawning above the train where it stops and it doesn't jump down and you can meet hook up and just go straight for the rune and like circumvent a whole fight. Um, you'll find, yeah, I think that's really a cool way to, to discover a lot of things and showcase it to the community. Everyone's different play styles and things that can be done. Yeah, I think there's a, a, all kinds of people that we could get on here and talk about speedrun tactics or uh, glitches or lore or weapon preference. And uh, I think, you know, I think we could have some fun with it. That'd be good. Yeah, you get get a lore special with Midnight. Maybe uh, uh, Rip and Tear Gaming. He tends to cover that a lot as well. Sure. Um, I'd like to bring Acid, speed Acid Glow would be would be cool for some lore stuff. Some speedrunners. Yeah. Runners. yeah King Dime. Yeah. Fight me. Perhaps. Yeah. I remember uh, Acid Glow from many, many, many years ago. Again, back in the fighting game days, I used to see him a lot for like Killer Instinct and stuff. And then even oh. before, even before then, Acid Glow used to make videos on uh, loads of old games that I used to play, like Turok Rage Wars and stuff like that. We're talking like ten years ago. I've known, I've known of Acid Glow stuff. It's it's always nice to cool. see people grow the way they have. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, so we're gonna call it, um, and we will see you uh, next time. And uh, we'll try to get midnight on here if uh, if we can work that together. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is Mayo. Goodbye. This is you funny. Want to say goodbye? Catch you later. Ciao. <laughs> yeah. See you, man. Peace out. Thanks for having me. As always, always a good time. All right. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye.